jefes y jefas de Estado y de Gobierno. Heads of State and Government, Ministers, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen, I declare open the second high-level United Nations Conference on South South Cooperation, and I call to order its first plenary meeting. I wish to inform the conference that in accordance with Rule 17 of the Provisional Rules of Procedure, I will serve as temporary president of the conference until the election of its president. I should like to extend a warm welcome to all of you, and I am looking forward to successful and productive conference. As representatives are aware, this conference is held pursuant to General Assembly Resolutions 71 stroke 244 of 21 December 2016 and 71 stroke 318 of 30 August 2017. I now invite the conference to proceed with the election of its president. It is my understanding that there is general agreement among all delegations to elect His Excellency Mauricio Macri, President of the Argentine Republic, as President of this conference. May I take it that the conference wishes to elect by acclamation His Excellency Mauricio Macri as President of the Second High-Level United Nations Conference on South-South Cooperation. It is so decided. Under Rule 6 of the Provisional Rules of Procedure, the conference should also elect an ex officio vice president from the host country. May I take it that there is agreement to elect Argentina in its capacity as host country as ex officio vice president of the conference? I hear no objection. It is so decided. On behalf of all participants in the conference, I congratulate His Excellency Mauricio Macri on his election as president of the conference, and I invite him to take his seat at the podium to take over the proceedings of the conference. I request protocol to escort His Excellency. Excelentísimo. Your Excellency Antonio Guterres, Secretary General of the United Nations. Your Excellency Maria Fernanda Espinosa Garcés, President of the Third Session of the General Assembly. Distinguished Heads of State and Government, Ministers, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen. It is an honor and a privilege for me to have been elected president of the second high-level United Nations Conference on South-South Cooperation. I will now proceed to the lectern to deliver my opening remarks. Ante todo, before anything else, once again, I want to welcome you to Argentina. 
We are very excited to welcome you, to welcome you so that we can continue working together for a sustainable, inclusive development. As with the 11th ministerial meeting of the WTO and the presidency of the G20, by presiding over this high-level conference, we demonstrate once again that the international community sees our country as a reliable partner, a leading partner with a vocation to build global and regional governance for the 21st century together. Cooperation is a wonderful tool to promote uh, horizontal linkages between countries with different levels of development. This also became clear last December when, with the premise of building a bridge in diversity together with leaders, we decided to emphasize in the G20 communique the role of South-South cooperation and triangular cooperation to make progress in implementing the 2030 Agenda. Argentina has a long-standing tradition on these fronts, especially in areas such as agro-industry, technological and productive innovation, health, justice, and human rights. Thanks to this work being done by hundreds of national institutions through FOAR, the Argentine Fund for International Cooperation, it was possible to develop 10,800 projects with over 80 countries. Forty years after the adoption of the Buenos Aires Plan of Action, we see a great opportunity before us to strengthen a system that makes it possible to exchange our knowledge and strengthen our capacity even more. An opportunity to demonstrate that cooperation can lead us to a better future. We live in an increasingly interdependent world with complex challenges which call for us to redouble our efforts, redouble our efforts to push forward a sincere, constructive dialogue where we project ourselves as partners for development. I am convinced that in dialogue and the search for shared interests, we will find the path to achieve the well-being and prosperity of our peoples. The time has come to think of alternative ways of complementing our work. The time has come to think of new areas of cooperation. I thus help that during these days of work, far-reaching debates will take place and we will be able to take specific steps to strengthen the system of cooperation for development. Once again, I want you to know that you can count on Argentina to cooperate in those areas where we can make a positive, constructive contribution and also to listen so that we can learn. Let us celebrate this 40th anniversary of the Buenos Aires Plan of Action. Oh, uh, doing more than our best, uh, once again, reaching consensus that will make it possible to translate the achievements we generate from the South and for the South, for the entire world. Let us show the world everything we have to give, our talent, our will, our will to work, to grow, to learn. Our objective is clear. We wish to generate solutions, making it possible to continue improving our people's lives. Let us continue to work together for that. Thank you very much to all of you for being with us. I now give the floor to Her Excellency. Maria Fernandez Espinosa Garces, please, madam, you have the floor. Your Excellency, Mauricio Macri. 
President of the uh, Republic of Argentina and uh, Chairman of the Conference, esteemed Antonio Guterres, Secretary General of the United Nations, Your Excellency Ambassador Inga Ronda King, President of ECOSOC, uh, ladies and gentlemen, heads of state and government, ministers, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, as a President of the General Assembly and as a Latin American woman, it is a great honor for me to uh, take part in the opening of this historic conference. Uh, I want to thank the government and the people of Argentina for their generous hospitality and their active contribution to the uh, preparation of this conference. I also want to thank Ambassadors Audra Pleipite and Adonia Ayebare of Lithuania and Uganda for their outstanding work in co-facilitating the negotiations on the final document. Uh, also, I would like to highlight the constructive spirit of all the delegations in New York and thank them for their efforts uh, so that uh, we can finally have a sound document on the role of South-South cooperation and the implementation of the 2030 Agenda. The United Nations Conference that took place 40 years ago in Buenos Aires is a symbol of solidarity and the determination of the uh, nations of the South uh, to be the actors of their own development and of the need to found a new international order that is more equitable and more inclusive and in which uh, to which all can contribute uh, based on their capabilities your excellencies the world today is different than the one that we lived in then. Uh, the geopolitical realities are different, and it's quite clear that the countries of the South have a decisive role today, not only in the economy, but also in the, the solutions to the various contemporary crises that we face, such as the, the, the climate crisis, the migra migration crisis, and security crisis. Now, our vision of development has also changed. With the 2030 Agenda, we have committed ourselves to transforming the lives of present generations in order to preserve uh, the future of generations uh, that will come. Today, we find ourselves in a, once again in this beautiful city to reaffirm our commitment to South-South cooperation and all the principles it's based on. However, we're also here to highlight the immense potential that this uh, means of cooperation offers us. All this, of course, without uh, forgetting the historic commitment and the responsibilities uh, as taken on by developed countries. These four decades prove that South-South uh, cooperation and triangular cooperation are powerful tools to effect positive changes in Southern in the countries of the South in their efforts to eradicate poverty in all its forms and dimensions. Now, countless projects that have been uh, developed uh, in the framework of South-South cooperation have produced extraordinary results, uh, such as uh, creation of jobs, strengthening of institutions and public policies, improvement in health care, education, culture, infrastructure and the transfer of technology as well as the capacity of response uh, uh, to natural disasters or emergency situations the, the, and the list goes on. Our challenge starting from today is to promote these examples and to adapt them to the new paradigm of sustainable development and also uh, to uh, uh, develop innovative ways of uh, working together uh, in now, for, for medium-income uh, countries, South-South cooperation can contribute to reducing inequalities and provide financing and investment. For uh, uh, landlocked developing countries and the LDCs, uh, what is needed are initiatives to transform their productive ca capacities and diversify, diversify them. We also need to uh, facilitate for small island developing states access to initiatives to adapt uh, so they can adapt to climate change, uh, bolster their resilience and sustainability of their debt. Uh, also, the African uh, uh, the, uh, 2060 development agenda should uh, as well benefit from this powerful tool. To, to achieve all this, it's essential to have technical and financial resources. According to UNCTAD, the current financial gap to achieve the SDGs uh, has reached $2.5 billion per year. We should also uh, uh, assess the impact of South-South cooperation and identify the main challenges for its implementation. We need more information and more statistics. And in all our initiatives, we should, of course, uh, include a gender perspective. To achieve gender equality and the empowerment of women is a necessity and also an obligation. 
South South cooperation can be traced back to to an awakening of the conscience of countries uh, of the South, nations of the South, and uh, we have, um, based on that, we've managed to overcome welfare-based uh, models of assistance and models of vertical cooperation. For example trans-regional technical cooperation uh, uh, for renewable energies in India, China, or Brazil are essential for the future environmental sustainability and economic sustainability. It's essential for us to consider the benefits of the fourth industrial revolution that these should also benefit countries of the South. In the area of, of health, we should highlight uh, the contingents of Cuban uh, doctors in Africa deployed to overcome the Ebola emergency or the promising initiative of the four countries of the Northern Triangle of Central America in developing like it being a comprehensive plan to deal with migration. However, South-South cooperation is not a replacement for North-South cooperation. It complements it and enriches it. Official development aid uh, remains critical and essential for pledges of ODA to be fulfilled. Uh, South-South cooperation is also the backbone of regional integration. It brings people together and facilitates processes of political coordination and makes us stronger. Your Excellencies, we are witnessing a wave of challenges to the multilateral system as well as to the uh, norms and institutions that we've built with so much effort. Isolationist forces, extreme nationalism are re-emerging in various parts of our planet. The best way to respond to this is to be even more effective and for our action to have even more to greater impact. To achieve this, uh, even stronger leadership is necessary. And the question we need to ask ourselves is the 821 million people who uh, are suffering hunger, the 200, 258 million migrants, or the more than 193 million jobless, what are their dreams? What are their needs? What do they expect from us? The, the answer is that whether in New York or New Delhi, in Paris, in Pretoria, in Quito, or in Helsinki, all, uh, everyone shares the same dream to have a decent uh, job, to have decent education and health care, a safe and uh, clean environment, a government that listens and responds, an, in an effective international system that produces tangible results. However, these dreams that appear so basic appear increasingly distant. Feelings of anxiety and frustration must have a convincing response that comes from a multilateral system based on cooperation and in its capacity to have an impact to guide and to support governments and the, uh, societies. It has been proven that South-South cooperation and then triangular cooperation have produced these responses and uh, make it possible to connect with people and, tra and transform in a positive way the lives of millions of people and of communities. It is clear that we are contributing to restoring trust in and the effectiveness of international cooperation and multilateral efforts. Your Excellencies, friends, lastly, I'd like to say that South-South cooperation represents the very best of our nations. Indeed, it is precisely the principles of solidarity and of working for the common good that make South-South cooperation such a powerful force. Now, recalling Gandhi, we can affirm that South-South cooperation can embody the change that we want to see in the world. I am very encouraged by what we have achieved so far, and I have no doubt that uh, South-South cooperation will have a transformative power for the future. And I wish you an excellent conference. Thank you. I thank the President of the General Assembly for her statement. I now give the floor to His Excellency Antonio Guterres. Your Excellency, President Mauricio Macri, Your Excellency, President Maria Fernanda Espinosa Garces, Your Excellency, Ambassador Adonia Ayabare, I thank the government and the people of Argentina for welcoming this conference. Forty years ago, the historic International Conference on South-South Cooperation gave way 
to the Buenos Aires Plan of Action Plan to promote and realize technical cooperation between developing countries. Since then, the Buenos Aires Plan of Action, known as PABA, has been the basis and the reference point of South-South cooperation. Guided by the principles of national ownership, equality, and non-conditional and non-conditionality, BAPA transformed the dynamics of international cooperation. It also highlighted the value of a different way of cooperating, based on the exchange of appropriate knowledge and technology between challenges that face similar development challenges. In the entire Global South, we have borne witness to a remarkable process since BAPA was adopted. Thanks in part to South-South cooperation, millions of women, uh, children, and men have emerged from extreme poverty. Countries in development have reached some of the fastest rates of economic growth until now and have agreed on uh, world standards for sustainable development. Meeting once ag again today in Buenos Aires, we recognize and celebrate the long path that we have walked together, but we also acknowledge the common challenges. Today we are here to ensure that South-South cooperation continues to respond to the changing reality of world development and the constantly changing needs of developing countries as these adopt the 2030 Agenda. We have the opportunity to develop and strengthen frameworks for South-South cooperation to perfect systems and tools and to increase transparency and encourage accountability. Excellencies, I see five issues that will be central to implementing the Paris Agreement on Climate Change and achieving the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. And South-South cooperation can offer solutions to all of them. First, rising inequality both between and within countries is eroding trust and deepening a sense of injustice. Globalization has enabled many people to escape poverty, but its benefits are not shared equitably and its costs fall disproportionately on the poor and the vulnerable. Cooperation can enable developing countries to learn from each other and grow more quickly, close income gaps and build inclusive and resilient societies. Second, climate change is the defining issue of our time and we are losing the race. 2018 was the fourth hottest year on record and natural disasters are impacting nearly every region. And this is why I'm bringing world leaders together at the Climate Action Summit in New York in September. I'm calling on leaders to bring concrete, realistic plans that raise ambition on mitigation, adaptation, finance, and innovation. We must enhance nationally determined contributions by 2020 in line with the reducing greenhouse gases emissions by 45% over the next decade. We need fundamental shifts to support green financing and increase investment in climate action from billions to trillions. And the Green Climate Fund must be fully resourced and operational. And the pledge to mobilize $100 billion a year by 2020 for climate action in the developing world, including mitigation and adaptation, must be implemented. South-South cooperation will be vital to ensure mutual support and the exchange of best practices to enhance adaptation and increase the resilience of developing countries and communities facing the devastating impacts of climate change. And South-South cooperation can also support the transformation of economies depending on fossil fuels with strategies that reinforce both sustainable development and environmental protection. Third, infrastructure and energy needs are set to expand enormously thanks to population growth and urbanization in the Global South. Some 60% of the area that is expected to become urban by 2030 has yet to be built. And if we get this wrong, we will lock ourselves into high emissions future with potentially catastrophic consequences. But if we get the infrastructure right, it will be an opportunity for development cooperation, industrial transition and growth, cross-border trade and investment, climate change mitigation adaptation and sustainable development. 
force. Gender has been described as the docking station for the SDGs, since it offers opportunities to engage on different cross-cutting issues. It must be at the heart of all efforts if we are to succeed. We have seen significant progress for women over the past 40 years. More girls are in school. More women are doing paid work. Harmful practices like female genital mutilation and child marriage are in decline. But this progress is not complete. Indeed, we are seeing a pushback against our efforts. And in some cases, the gender equality gap is widening. This affects us all, because where women are better represented in politics, we see improved social protection and increased spending on development. When women have access to land and credit, harvests increase. When girls are educated, they contribute more to their communities and break cycles of poverty. And let's not forget that countries with the highest number of women in parliament, in the national security institutions, and as farmers, are indeed in the global south. Fifth, the multilateral development system must be better positioned to support South-South cooperation and implement the 2030 Agenda. South-South cooperation has evolved significantly over the last decades, but multilateral institutions, including the United Nations, have not kept up. I'm grateful to Member States for recognizing the role of the United Nations in the outcome conference of this conference. And we'll take up the mandates you are entrusting to us, and you can count on my personal commitment to make sure the ongoing reforms of the United Nations reinvigorate our support for South-South cooperation. Excellencies, we also need to realign financing for sustainable development and unlock the trillions that will deliver the 2030 Agenda. South-South cooperation can never be a substitute for official development assistance or replace the responsibilities of the Global North set out in the Addis Ababa Action Agenda and the Paris Agreement. South-South cooperation must also involve young people, civil society, the private sector, academia and others, building innovative partnerships and extending the reach of initiatives. It must harness the potential of new technologies and digitalization that create opportunities and promote inclusivity. South-South cooperation is a global exercise of all countries of the South to benefit everyone, and including the least developed countries. Every country, every partner has something to share or teach, whatever their circumstances. Excellencies, this conference is a starting point. Later this year, over the course of a week in September, heads of state will gather in New York for the Sustainable Development Goals Summit and the Climate Action Summit. They will hold high-level meetings on universal health coverage and financing for development and review progress on support for small island developing states. All these meetings are aimed at accelerating implementation of the 2030 Agenda and the Paris Agreement which are born from a consensus on the common interests that bind us together. Now it's time to stake out that common ground again and take bold and transformative action. Together, we can achieve the Sustainable Development Goals, we can beat climate change, and we can transform the lives of people around the world. Thank you. I thank the Secretary General of the United Nations for his opening statement. I now give the floor to the President of the Economic and Social Council, Her Excellency Inga Rhonda King. Your Excellency, Mr. Mauricio Macri, President of Argentina and President of the Conference on South-South Cooperation. Your Excellency, Ms. Maria Fernanda Espinosa Garces, President of the General Assembly. Your Excellency, Mr. Antonio Guterres, Secretary General. 
Administrator of the UN Development Program, Mr. Akim Steiner, Your Excellency, Mr. Adonia Ayebara, President Designate of the High Level Committee on South South Cooperation, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen. Forty years since the adoption of the Buenos Aires Plan of Action, South South Cooperation is today a key to unlock the promise of the 2030 Agenda. The 2018 Development Cooperation Forum survey indicates that developing countries increasingly incorporate South-South and Triangular cooperation in their national development cooperation strategies. My own country, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, a small island developing state, has made progress with the shared expertise and know-how from our neighbors and friends in the South. South-South cooperation has been instrumental in my country's pursuit of a sustainable future. This has also been the experience of many others from the Global South. And what strikes me is how much the current dynamism and innovation in the South-South space are cutting through business as usual, politics and policy. Still, much more Still, much more can be done to fully leverage South-South and triangular cooperation for sustainable development. I would like to highlight, uh, highlight, among many, four key points of action recommended by ECOSOC's Development Cooperation Forum, the DCF. First, be more visible. The visibility of South-South and triangular cooperation must be further increased. Analyzing their added value and sustainable development impact will only advance the global effort to achieve the 2030 Agenda. Such efforts should be supported at all levels, including globally through the DCF and other ECOSOC platforms, such as the Financing for Development Forum, Multi-Stakeholder Forum on Science, Technology and Innovation, and High-Level Political Forum on Sustainable Development. These are your fora, please use them. Second, be bold. Countries and actors of the Global South must be bolder in sharing their experiences and evidence on development cooperation, and the Global North bolder in learning from and integrating the experience of the Global South into their practices. Third, be strategic. Regional and national experiences in South-South and Triangular cooperation should be mainstreamed into national development plans. This will promote more transparent, accountable and impactful cooperation. It should also, one, further strengthen institutional capacities and collaborative arrangements and two, build integrated national financing frameworks. Fourth, be specific in boosting inclusion and effective multi-stakeholder engagement. Increase engagement of parliamentarians, local authorities, women, civil society, youth, and other stakeholders. To this end, more exchanges are needed on how we can leverage the comparative advantages of the different stakeholders involved, and how to develop applicable policy and legal frameworks. In the lead up, to its next high-level meeting in May 2020, the DCF will continue to contribute as a unique and trusted space for sharing on-the-ground insights and advancing action-oriented global policy dialogue on South-South and Triangular Cooperation. Excellencies, everyone active in the South-South space has a story of how collective ingenuity and solidarity can overcome the seemingly insurmountable. In St. Vincent and the Grenadines, after decades facing huge costs and limited availability of suitable land, the combination of creativity and political will with effective South-South cooperation, both technical and financial, within a broad-based country-owned effort brought to life the Argyle International Airport in 2017. This was our first international airport and the largest capital project ever undertaken in the country. Think what the world can achieve with more broad-based, country-owned, inclusive and structured South-South and Triangular Cooperation for Sustainable Development.
In closing, I would like to thank our esteemed host, the government of Argentina, and wish all participants a most successful conference. I thank you. I want to thank the President of the Economic and Social Council. Now I unfortunately need to leave and I will be replaced by my deputy. Uh, I will be replaced by Minister Jorge uh, Fabre, Ambassador Jorge Fabre, Foreign Minister. Continuamos, so we will continue with the session now. I now give the floor to the Administrator of the United Nations Development Program, Mr. Achim Steiner. Your Excellency, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and also Vice President of the Conference, Your Excellency, the President of the General Assembly, Your Excellency, Secretary General, your Excellency the President of the Economic and Social Council and Your Excellency the President-designate of the High-Level Committee on South-South Cooperation. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, I would like to begin by saying what a privilege it is for me to attend this conference 40 years after an idea was born here in Buenos Aires at the first South-South Cooperation Conference and to act as your Secretary General, for which I want to thank the Member States for their confidence and support. Yesterday, together with Minister Fourier, we had uh, the very touching honor of uh, attending the joint flag-raising ceremony here in Buenos Aires, and it is wonderful to see the flag of the United Nations and that of Argentina flying next to each other in hosting such an inspiring conference that began a journey on South-South cooperation here in Buenos Aires just over 40 years ago. And 40 years ago, when member states met in Buenos Aires to adopt the plan of action, the Buenos Aires plan of action, it marked the beginning of an idea that was to change the way that international cooperation was to evolve, not only between countries, but also within the context of international cooperation generally and within the United Nations. It was a time that was very different from today's. And as we meet 40 years, 40 years later here in Buenos Aires for BAPA plus 40 or PABA plus 40, it is also a reminder of how far we have traveled together, how significantly the world has evolved since that time, and how important the concept of South-South cooperation and triangular cooperation remains to this world. Intra-South trade today is higher than ever, accounting for more than a quarter of all world trade, while foreign direct investment outflows from the South today represent one-third of global foreign direct investment flows. South-South cooperation has become, in many respects, a distinct and yet integral element of international cooperation. It is distinct and integral to the development of the global economy as we view it today. It is distinct and integral to the Agenda 2030 and the Sustainable Development Goals. And it is distinct and integral also to the United Nations, the United Nations Sustainable Development Work, and indeed the work of the United Nations Development Program, whose own journey in accompanying South-South cooperation has been an integral part of the agenda since its birth. Indeed, a year before the Buenos Aires Conference in 1978, it was UNDP that helped to facilitate in Kuwait a meeting that drew out the principles and directions that would then inform that first conference and ultimately uh, the Buenos Aires Plan of Action. In today's world, South-South cooperation, triangular cooperation are indeed distinct but integral also to the work of UNDP. Whether it is from Colombia to the Dominican Republic where we collaborate on climate resistant rice, whether it is from Ethiopia to Cameroon on HIV safety net programs, whether it is in working with Cuba and in the Caribbean on disaster risk reduction, whether it is working with China and Africa on renewable energy, or in the digital economy of today working with India or with Bangladesh on taking advantage of some of the greatest 
and most recent innovations in terms of e-government, the digital economy, connecting rural health centers through cellular networks to national um, cold chain management systems for vaccines, having access points, as we have seen in Bangladesh, with the access to information system and network that allows citizens with now 5,300 e-government access points across the country to significantly reduce their time to take advantage of government services. These are just a few of the examples that have become an integral part of the offering that we also want to renew as UNDP here in Buenos Aires in the year 2019 to South-South Corporation and Triangular Corporation. In today's portfolio of UNDP, we depend on South-South Corporation to a degree as never before. More than 900 projects distinctly identify South-South Corporation as central to our work. And I hope that in both the interactions and the opportunities we will have as a UN family to engage with you during the coming two days, you will sense how committed we are to indeed realize the Secretary General's pledge that he has just made to you. Let me end, uh, Excellencies, by thanking all those who worked so hard to make this conference possible. From those permanent representatives in New York who led the negotiations, to my colleagues in the United Nations Office of South South Cooperation, and in particular its head Jorge Shediek, to my colleague Catherine Pollard and the GCAM team that have worked so hard together with our colleagues here in Argentina to make this conference be a very efficient and effective forum for all of you. And above all, our colleagues in the Argentinian government, in the institutions with whom we have worked over the last year in preparing the stage for BAPA Plus 40. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, let us speak with a loud voice, as you just called for president, and with clarity about an idea that is not just about technical and technocratic cooperation. It is an idea that is meant to inspire, it is meant to accelerate, and it is meant to bring the world together in support of the development aspirations of 7 billion people, and in particular those of the Global South. For us in UNDP, it is a privilege to accompany you on this journey. Thank you. I want to thank the Administrator of the United Nations Development Program, and I would now like to give the floor to the President-Designate of the High-Level Committee on South-South Cooperation, His Excellency Adonia Ayebare. Excellency, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Argentina and the Vice President of the Conference, Heads of States and Government, Your Excellency Fernanda Espinosa, President of the 73rd Session of the General Assembly, Your Excellency Inga Londa King, the President of the Economic and Social Council, Mr. Achim Steiner, UNDP Administrator, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen. It's a great honor for me to speak today at the celebration of the 40th anniversary of the landmark International Conference on South-South Cooperation that led to the Buenos Aires Plan of Action known as BAPA. I would like to express at the outset my appreciation for the government and the people of Argentina under the leadership of President Macri for their warm reception in hosting us here. I would like to thank the Secretary General, Mr. Antonio Guterres, for his support in convening this conference, and Her Excellency Maria Fernanda Espinosa, the President of the General Assembly, for leading the intergovernmental process. I would also like to thank my fellow co-facilitator of the outcome document for this conference, Her Excellency Ambassador Udra, Prepared, permanent representative of Lithuania to the United Nations, for her hard work bringing all parties together in open, transparent, and inclusive consultations to achieve consensus on this historic piece of legislation. I take this opportunity on behalf of myself and Ambassador Udra to express our sincere appreciation to all delegates for their support and constructive engagement in the process. 
In this regard, our work would not have been possible without the steadfast support of the United Nations Office for South-South Cooperation in facilitating our negotiations. We thank you. Excellencies, the 1978 Buenos Aires Plan of Action was an important step taken by developing countries to enhance cooperation among countries of the South and provide the platform for international community to support these development efforts. This is an occasion to recognize and underscore 40 years of collaborative initiatives among developing countries that have helped to improve the lives of millions across the Global South. Solidarity among peoples and countries of the Global South has contributed to the improvement of developing countries' national well-being and collective self-reliance. Together with what BAPA stressed as an important partnership with, develop, with developed countries and multilateral agencies, now known as triangular cooperation, South-South cooperation has enhanced developing countries' capacity to attain national priorities and other international agreed development goals, especially the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, balancing economic, social, and environmental dimensions. The South's strong economic performance in the recent past has enabled Southern countries to achieve important milestones in the reduction of poverty and extreme hunger, improved education and health, and other positive gains. We welcome the emergence of new Southern financing sources, including regional development banks and other national development banks. The, pre the tremendous achievement of the South importantly include initiatives by developing and least developed countries which have themselves developed innovative successes in critical areas such as food security, access to information, and communication technologies, among others. Despite rapid progress of Southern cooperation in scale, scope, dimension, challenges remain as Southern countries, particularly LDCs, continue to face enormous development challenges in terms of high prevalence of poverty, malnutrition and unemployment, serious deficits in infrastructure and productive capacities and the impact of external shocks. Excellencies, this conference is important in revitalizing our efforts to address these challenges through strong, broad-based partnerships based on international solidarity. We must seize this opportunity to exploit the full potential of South-South cooperation as complement to, not a substitute to North-South cooperation. We have clearly laid out our expectations for the United Nations funds, programs, and specialized agencies to help achieve our goals, to help us share concrete solutions to support South-South cooperation by acting as catalysts for cooperation and strengthen the capacities of regional organizations. I note with appreciation that many United Nations entities have integrated South-South and triangular cooperation into their attractive strategic frameworks or work plans and designed innovative South-South and triangular cooperation initiatives to benefit developing countries. I urge you, the United Nations, to intensify its support in facilitating access to knowledge and expertise of developing countries as a basis for applying South-South cooperation in the implementation of the 2030 Agenda. I encourage member states to continue engaging in policy dialogue within the High-Level Committee on South-South cooperation and further enhance South-South and triangular cooperation through sharing their homegrown successes with each other. Excellencies, we must employ our collective strengths in identifying and tackling challenges specific to developing countries' circumstances. I am confident that this conference will result in the political impetus for us to start charting a strategic course together to ensure that the benefits of South-South and triangular cooperation impact the lives of people around the world. I thank you. The president of the designated committee of uh, high level from Cooperation South South, South, South Mr. Adonia Jebare. Down, I doy la palabra a la I give the floor to Madam Atisha Nawashis Ali Khan, Deputy Secretary General of the Islamic Chamber of Commerce, Industry, and Agriculture of Pakistan, who will speak in her capacity as representative of the private sector.
Your Excellency Jorge Marcelo Fori, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Worship of the Republic of Argentina. Your Excellency Ambassador Inga Ronda King, President of the Economic and Social Council. Mr. Achim Steiner, UNDP Administrator. Your Excellency Adonia Aibara, President Designate of the High Level Committee of South South Cooperation. Excellencies, Ministers, ladies and gentlemen. It is a momentous moment for all of us today to witness the 40 years of Buenos Aires plan of action. And we thank the people of Argentina under the leadership of His Excellency Morsello Macri for giving us an opportunity to be in the beautiful country and the vibrant city of Buenos Aires. The concept of South-South cooperation has evolved and assumed several dimensions, focusing on mutual benefits for the achievement of national and collective self-reliance of the global South. A key component in this scenario is the private sector. It is the engine of growth which has played and will continue to play a vital role in the overall global economic agenda and more importantly in the strengthening and development of South-South and triangular cooperation. Private sector engagement and development process has been the center of the development agenda of many international organizations which reflects the impact of the private sector as a driver of sustainable and inclusive economic growth, job creation, and poverty alleviation. However, for this engagement to be concrete and effective, the continuation of the governments in providing a conducive business and investment climate is essential along with the strengthening of business intermediary and support organizations. It is also important to support developing countries <clears throat> through South-South and Triangular Cooperation for strengthening micro, small, and medium enterprises and creating an enabling environment, including sustainable industrialization. The private sector needs to be involved in public-private dialogue at the level of policy formulation and to be facilitated so that it be an implementing and financing partner. It needs to engage in investment, sustainable trade, and bring forth innovative and inclusive business models. A framework may be established to understand the needs of the private sector in the global south and to boost the potentials of the private sector as a driver of sustainable development. In line with the Addis Ababa Action Agenda, private sector partnerships need to be promoted to encourage greater international private financial partnership in development for the support of Agenda 2030. I thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you. The private sector. I now give the floor to Madam Vitalish Meja, Executive Director of Reality of Aid Network Africa as representative of civil society. No, it's not a señora. <laughs> Your Excellency, Minister for Foreign Affairs, um, Argentina, Heads of State and Government, your Excellency Ambassador Maria Fernanda Espinoza Gases, President of the 20th, 73rd Session of the General Assembly. Your Excellency Ambassador Inga Roda King, President of the Economic and Social Council. Mr. Achim Steiner, UNDP Administrator. Your Excellency Adonia Ayebare, President Designate of the High Level Committee on South South Cooperation. Excellency, excellencies, ministers, ladies and gentlemen. I have the pleasure to be among you today to give opening statement to the meeting of the second high level United Nations Conference on South-South Cooperation. We are at crossroads. It has been more than 40 years since this agenda was brought forth. Let us celebrate this milestone. 
South-South cooperation and triangular cooperation is growing. We must also, however, be prepared to look at each other in the eye and ask ourselves tough questions. What have we achieved and for who? In doing so, we must go back to the basics, to the aspirations and the foundations of South-South cooperation. Ladies and gentlemen, South-South cooperation remain a manifestation of solidarity among peoples and countries of the South that contributes to their national well-being, national and collective self-reliance, and the attainment of development goals. It is a common endeavor of peoples of the South, born out of the shared experience and sympathies based on their common objectives and solidarity towards national development, self-reliance, and independence. It is a demonstration of solidarity between equals and a desire for mutual development. The partnerships of, of countries engaged in the South-South cooperation are characterized as horizontal, as it deviates from the traditional donor-recipient donor relationship. These assumptions imply that countries of the South are involved not in unbalanced relationships of power, but rather are collaborating as, as equals that mutually seek to engage development in development cooperation. We must never lose these aspirations. We must never lose this focus. South-South cooperation remains a complementary and not a substitute to the North-South cooperation. We call on South-South cooperation actors to serve as, as an example and challenge North-South cooperation by holding its core principles while urging the North to deliver on their aid obligations, fulfill their development effectiveness commitments, and stop instrument, instrumentalization of aid for security and, and profit interests. Ladies and gentlemen, today the world faces extreme economic, gender, and political inequalities that require urgent and concrete policies and initiatives to be effectively reduced. South-South and triangular cooperation is well positioned to contribute to reduce inequalities all over the world. South-South cooperation should continue to be an instrument not just for implementing Agenda 2030, but more so for realizing its aspirations of national and collective genuine sustainable development goals, self-reliance, and independence. It should continue to be an expression of solidarity of the global South. It should continue to enable developing countries to play a more active role in international policy and decision-making processes in support of their efforts to achieve sustainable development goals at the national and community level. We also call on South-South cooperation to play a key role in strengthening domestic resource mobilization at national level without taking away development resources from and or imposing tax burdens on the poor. South-South cooperation should promote reforms to foster universal social protection coverage, build progressive fiscal systems, and ensure living wages for all as key tools for equality. It should prioritize financing for gender equality and women's rights, including financing women's rights organizations, especially from the global south. In strengthening further and further invigorating the framework of South-South cooperation, we must seek to answer the following questions. For what and for whom? Answering this will make it easier for all to see if our actions are indeed relevant and serve the overall goal of the needs of the South, and that is the people. South-South cooperation should be achieving human, human development and equality within and between countries and between men and women, together with the reaffirmation of commitments on the 2030 Agenda. At the heart of South-South cooperation, Citizens must be at the heart. When talking about inclusiveness and multi-stakeholder partnerships, we must first and foremost endeavor to create institutional frameworks, spaces, and resources to ensure people's ownership of our aspiration, people's ownership of our initiatives and results. Citizens of the South must cease to be seen as beneficiaries, but as rights holders and as key actors of development. 
They should be included as key decision makers, planners, implementers, monitors, and evaluators of South-South cooperation programs and projects at all levels. We urge you to begin acknowledging and respecting CSOs as independent development actors, not just in words, but by deeds. By providing civil society organizations with the enabling environment to play the rightful role from access to timely information, quality information, and access to official engagement spaces and financial resources. Above all, we call for the reversal of the global trends of closing civic space and putting an end to repression of civil society organizations so that they can effectively contribute to the goals and objectives of South-South cooperation. For South-South cooperation to be effective, we should, pro they sh we should promote peace, one that is based on justice and addresses the root causes of conflict by desisting from land grabbing, pursuance of extractive industry, or control of geostrategic locations. While, other, while one of the principles of South-South cooperation is non-interference on domestic affairs, we urge that there be, there be a mechanism to ensure that South-South cooperation actors hold each other to account in promoting peace and pre preventing conflicts. To realize this, it is important that future investments of South-South cooperation pursue development agenda that puts people first, people's rights first, and ensure that decent work based on employment opportunities, respect of labor rights, social protection, social dialogue are in place. We urge that South-South cooperation adheres to the principles of transparency, accountability, and development results. On the other hand, in engaging private sector, we urge against letting the corporations and international financial institutions from interfering or influencing the decisions of the Southern governments. Their role in South-South cooperation should be decreased, if not immediately limited. They should be held accountable and required to comply with international standards, labor standards, responsible business conduct based on due diligence, and physical and social and environmental liability. On the other hand, we recognize the importance of the role of, South, of, of domestic private sector in the South, particularly micro, small, and medium enterprises, and call for their support so that they may contribute to sustainable national industrialization, support the modernization of sustainable agriculture, and achieve people-centered development and self-reliance. In involving private sector, it should be noted, however, that provision of essential services such as health, education, housing, water, and clean energy should remain the core responsibility of the government. Also, there, there needs to be a strong caution in developing public-private partnership arrangements with the private sector. We recognize that South-South and Triangular Cooperation requires a robust, well-functioning United Nations system. We see the, the 75th anniversary of the United Nations in 2020 as an opportunity of, for stock-taking a recommitment to multilateralism, and a consideration of measures to strengthen the organization. In this regard, we encourage all member states to engage with appointed co-facilitators and the General Assembly preparation in preparation for the 25th Anniversary Summit. I thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We thank the representative of the social civil society, and con esto hemos escuchado. We have heard the last speaker for the opening segment of the conference. Distinguished heads of state and government, ministers, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, before proceeding to the consideration of the organizational items on the provisional agenda of the conference, delegations are informed that all official documents are also available on the conference website. The conference will now consider item three of the provisional agenda, entitled Adoption of the Rules of Procedure. Delegations have before them a note by the Secretariat issued as document A, stroke, conf, 
235 stroke 2 contain the provisional rules of procedure of the conference. May I take it that the conference agrees to adopt the rules of procedure as contained in document A stroke conf 235 stroke 2? I hear no objections. It is so decided. The conference has thus concluded its consideration of agenda item 3. The, con the conference will now consider item 4 of the provisional agenda entitled Adoption of the Agenda. I would like to draw the attention of delegations to document A stroke CONF 235 stroke 1, which contains the provisional agenda for the conference. May I take it that the conference wishes to adopt the agenda as contained in document A stroke CONF 235 stroke 1? I hear no objection. It is so decided. The conference has thus concluded its consideration of agenda item 4. The conference will now proceed to consider item 5 of the agenda, entitled Election of Officers Other Than the President. Under Rule 6 of the Rules of Procedure, the conference shall now elect from among representatives of participating states and on the basis of ensuring the representative character of the General Committee nine vice presidents, one of whom shall be designated as Rapporteur General, and an ex officio vice president from the host country, Argentina. With regard to the election of the remaining vice presidents, I have been informed that there is general agreement among delegations to elect as vice presidents the following countries from African states, Guinea and Morocco, from Asia Pacific states, Bangladesh and the Islamic Republic of Iran, from Eastern European states, Estonia and Lithuania, from Latin American and Caribbean states, Brazil, from Western European and other states, Ireland. May I take it that the conference wishes to elect by acclamation Bangladesh, Brazil, Estonia, Guinea, Islamic Republic of Iran, Lithuania, Morocco, and as vice presidents by acclamation? I hear no objection. It is so decided. On behalf of the conference, I congratulate the Vice Presidents on their election. The conference, I now invite the conference to proceed with the designation of the Rapporteur General of the conference. I have been informed that there is a general understanding to designate His Excellency Sven Jurgensen, Permanent Representative of Estonia to the United Nations in New York as Rapporteur General of the Conference. May I take it that the Conference wishes to designate His Excellency Sven Jurgensen of Estonia as Rapporteur General of the Conference? I hear no objection. It is so decided. I congratulate uh, Ambassador Jurgensen and I wish him the very best on his, uh, in his work as, designation, uh, as designated Rapporteur General of the conference. The conference has thus concluded the stage of its consideration of agenda item five. The conference will now consider item six of the agenda entitled Organization of Work. The conference has before it a note by the Secretary General entitled Organizational and Procedural Matters contained in document A stroke CONF 235 stroke 4. May I take it that the conference wishes to approve 
the organization of work as contained in document circulated as A stroke uh, CONF 235 stroke 4. I hear no objection. It is so decided. I now invite the conference to consider sub-item A of agenda item 7, entitled Appointment of Members of the Credentials Committee. Rule 4 of the Rules of Procedure provides that there shall be a Credentials Committee of nine members appointed at the beginning of the conference, and that its composition shall be based on that of the Credentials Committee of the General Assembly of the United Nations at its 73rd session. The following eight candidate states uh, have confirmed uh, that they are able to serve, as, uh, to serve as members of the Credentials Com Committee, Antigua and Barbuda, Chile, China, Finland, Ghana, the Russian Federation, Sierra Leone, and the United States of America. There is one open seat, uh, and uh, the nomination will be it will take place uh, at a later date. May I take it that the conference wishes to appoint uh, Antigua and Barbuda, Chile, China. Finland, Ghana, the Russian Federation, Sierra Leone, and the United States of America as members of the Credentials Committee of the conference. I hear no objection. It is so decided. Delegates are reminded that in accordance with the rules of procedure of the conference, and if they have not already done so, Credentials issued by the state, head of state or government or by the Minister for Foreign Affairs or in the case of the European Union by the President of the European Commission should be submitted to the Office of Legal Affairs located in the Secretariat offices on level minus two of the conference center. The conference has thus concluded its consideration of side item A of agenda 